I'm Michael Drives, and this is the 2024 Ford Mustang Mach-E Premium e-all-wheel drive in vapor blue metallic. Now, Ford made some pretty big waves and ruffled some feathers back in 2019 at the LA Auto Show when they introduced the Mustang Mach-E, because this is not the traditional two-door Mustang that the world was used to. They had the audacity to introduce an electric Mustang, and not only was it electric, it was five doors. This is a 2024 Mach-E Premium E all-wheel drive. Now, as far as trims go for the Mustang, you've got Select, and then you have Premium, which is this model, and then you have the performance-oriented GT, and new for 2024, you have a Mustang Rally. But we're gonna focus here on this premium model. Now, this is in vapor blue metallic, as I mentioned, and it stickers for about $49,995. With options, however, this particular model has an MSRP of around $55,000, and that's because it includes these beautiful bronze painted pocket wheels. It has three years of Ford Blue Cruise, which is a hands-free highway driving system, and then it also includes a mobile charging cord, which adds $500. So with all those options combined, it adds about $5,000 to the MSRP, including destination and delivery. So right away, you're thinking electric vehicle, you may be wondering about range. Well, I'm happy to report that new for 2024, range has actually been improved. Um, this is a standard range battery. You have two battery of options available with Mach-E. You've got the standard range, and then you have the extended range. The standard range is what you see here in this configuration with E all-wheel drive, will give you 230 miles per gallon combined, and that's an EPA rating. Now, if you were go going to buy the rear wheel drive version of this standard range battery, you'd get 250 miles of range. Um, if you got the extended range battery and wanted the most range possible in a Mach-E, then you would go for rear wheel drive extended range and you'd get 320 miles. Now, if you want the most high performance Mustang Mach-E that you can possibly get, then you would configure the GT with the performance upgrade and that's gonna get you zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds, which is pretty insane. This car will actually do zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds, which is a bit mind blowing considering what supercars did 20 years ago. So it's a really quick car and that's just with the standard range battery. Let's briefly talk about charging. While Ford has committed to switching over to the Tesla charging standard, which is the next connector, this 2024 model actually has a CCS combo connector, but you can get an adapter from Ford that will allow it to charge on the Tesla supercharging network at this point in time. I'm happy to report too that charging time for level three has been improved, so that supercharging or level three DC fast charging will go from 10 to 80% in just 32 minutes on this particular standard range battery e all-wheel drive configuration. As far as efficiency, it actually does better than say a BMW iX xDrive 40. On the other hand, a Lucid Air Pure or a Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive is actually going to get significantly better MPGEs. As far as safety, NHTSA gives it a five-star rating for side impact for both front and rear passengers, as well as a five-star rating for rollover. However, there is no overall rating right now from NHTSA. As far as the design of the Mach-E, you can see it's super sleek. With, it actually works very well as an SUV. Down here again, I mentioned those 19-inch uh, bronze painted pocket wheels that look really good and they actually being 19 inches they're not super oversized they provide a really supple ride um, your ccs charging port is right here really easy to get to and i like that there's no plugs to to uh, attach the level two charger and if you need to connect a level three combo charger you just flip down this little flap there's nothing that's going to fall off or dangle and plug in that charger um, super easy and there's an indicator here that will show you how far the battery has charged or your charge level and how far it actually has to go. Super convenient right there to have that light. These uh, lamps on the premium model actually will project a pony down here on the floor. So you'll have the Mustang logo uh, down on the ground, which is really cool when you approach the car at night. That's all standard with the premium trim. And then you have a nice Mach-E logo down here. And then coming back, it sort of tapers and pinches to the back. Now, one of the really unique things about the Mach-E is the door handles. And, you know, you're looking at the car and like, well, there are no door handles. They're actually right here. And when I say door handles, it's just the fronts 
uh, that get door handles. So to open a door in a Maki, you're just going to push this round button here and the door is going to pop out on its own and then you can grab it here with this little handle. It's probably done for aerodynamics and it's also pretty cool. It takes no time to get used to and it's very natural hand position, especially if you're right-handed. I don't know if you're left-handed, I think it's pretty much the same, but you're just gonna pop that button, pull on it, and then give it a shut. Now to lock the car, don't have the traditional kind of a handle when you have the uh, fob in your pocket. So you just kind of touch above that, that little thing. Let's see, there we go. Give that a light tap and the doors will close. Now for the back door, it's a little different story. You still have the button here, and at nighttime it's really nice that these will light up. So if you're, you're not fumbling for where is that, that button, you're just gonna give it a push there. The door is gonna pop out, but there's no handle, so you can just grab it literally anywhere here on the painted metal part. I think you could even grab it up here, but it's just, it's just easy to grab it down there, give it an open, and then close it. Um, now, even though these are electronic latches on the outside of the car, on the inside, you still have, and you can't see it in this photo, a traditional latch to just pull back on a mechanical release to open the door uh, from the inside. So let's take a look at the back of the car and I'll show you something really cool and unique there. Welcome to the back of the Mustang Mach-E. Now I turned on the hazard light so you could see a really cool feature of the car. And this actually happens when you turn the turn signal on as well, but there's a sequence or a sequential uh, turn signal and hazard light on the back of the car, which is just a really cool feature and something unique that you wouldn't find on your more ordinary um, compact SUV, I suppose. But uh, it's a Mustang signature, the way those lights kind of beam across the back. Really neat. I'm going to turn that off so we can show you the cargo area. Welcome back without the distracting flashers. Just a couple other details. You do get a rear windshield wiper with the Mach-E and a nice big rear spoiler, which is uh, pretty sporty and actually will help hopefully with aerodynamics and keeping rain off the back window. Now to open this hatch, you're just gonna reach down here and there's a little rubber sort of nub a button and that's going to electrically open the hatch. And you can see you have a lot of space back here. There is nothing under the floor. There's just a little air inflation kit down there and a little bit of room for storage, but primarily all your storage is gonna be up here. And these seats are split folding seats, which will split and fall down. And then back here you also have, in this case, it has the Bang & Olufsen 10 speaker audio system. So there's a subwoofer back here and you have a 12 volt sort of traditional um, accessory power plug port there. Now to close the hatch, you just look back for that rubber uh, switch there that's in the center, and you're gonna give that a push, and it's gonna take a second, and then it's gonna lower the hatch. Now the big question, what's under the hood? And I'll tell you, it's not an engine. Now I've already pulled the release, so all I have to do is give that a lift, and you'll see there's a huge storage space in the front of the Mach-E. In fact, you can fill it with ice and fill it with sodas because it's drainable. In fact, Ford even puts little cup holders right here in front to sort of suggest that. Um, if you wanted to and you were to tailgate, you could just sit on the front and tailgate, you know, why not? And then you can just grab your drink. Now, another thing I love about the Franc is that, especially of it's of this size, you can throw in a couple pizzas. You can pick up some takeout, put it in here and you're not gonna smell up the rest of the car and it may keep it a little bit warm because it is sealed and protected. And another nice thing about this, it's sealed and protected from the elements. So there's an actual real thick rubber strip that goes around the top of the cargo area when the hood comes down to keep that frunk, or your frunk items safe and secure and clean. Now let's close this up and check out the interior. Welcome to the interior of the Mach-E. Right off the bat, you're gonna notice this is the dark interior. Now, a lighter color interior is available. I don't know if you can see on the left side of the display, it shows you your charge immediately when turning on. So you've got 95% of battery range left in the vehicle. And it's completely thoroughly modern. No fake analog gauges here uh, replicated with a digital screen or anything like that. And the graphics are really big and bold and crisp. So you're not gonna be squinting to look at your miles per hour or your battery charge or the percentage left, which is really great. 
But on the dash here, I just love the materials that are used in the Maki. -E. You have a really nice mesh fabric, which almost looks like a big sound bar across the top of the dash. It's just elegant. And then there's a sort of like a carbon fiber effect plastic trim here, and then a stitched vinyl. Uh, it's important to note that these seats are not leather. They are a vegan friendly synthetic material as well as the steering wheel cover. So there's no leather in this vehicle whatsoever. Down here on the door, you have all soft materials. So you have a, a rubber padded material up here, a rubber padded material here um, with vinyl covering. And then you've got more stitched uh, material here, as well as some more of that mesh fabric that you see up on the dash. And then this premium model does have ambient lighting all around, which you can't probably see at the moment, but it's really nice. And the color will change depending on the drive mode uh, that you select. In fact, Drive modes are actually right up here on the screen, so this is easy to show. You've got Whisper, which kind of translates to Eco. Um, it's gonna be a quieter, more relaxed driving experience. And then you have Engage, which is your normal everyday comfort driving, it's responsive. And then you have Unbridle. And in each mode, you can turn on or off one pedal driving, a propulsion sound. Now, the propulsion sound in the Mach-E is sort of a synthetic sound that sort of mimics an engine, but it's a little bit calmer and more powerful sounding actually and then an auto hold you can uh, engage or disengage that and it'll hold you on a hill from rolling back i really like the propulsion sound in the Maki. -E. i'm usually not a fan of the fake sounds but if you're going to have one this is the one to to turn on uh, if you're test driving different vehicles because it's not obnoxious and really intrusive it just subtly adds to the sound of the of the drive in a nice way. So I really like what they've done with that propulsion sound and I, I won't often say that. So really big screen here and it nicely integrates Apple CarPlay. In fact, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are wireless in all trims of the Mustang Mach-E. Now this screens, both of them here, are very bright white right now because it's daytime, but in the evening I have it set to automatically switch to dark mode so they won't be glaring and blinding you uh, when you're driving at night. And that's configurable. You can choose dark mode, light mode, or auto. So it'll adjust based on the outside uh, lighting conditions. All premium and above models do include the Bang & Olufsen sound system. So you'll see this little silver badge here, the B&O and the B&O down here under my leg on the door panel. That means that this car has a 10 speaker sound system from Bang & Olufsen. And it also has a subwoofer as well integrated in that and it sounds really good. Uh, I highly recommend getting the premium model just to get that, that audio system and you will not be disappointed. Up here, your traditional sunglass holder integrated in there. And then this car has home link built into the, the visor. And you also have a frameless rear view mirror, which is really nice and just adds a bit of class to the car. So the interior of the mach -E just feels far more premium than the Mustang name even suggests, which I love. And it's also fun just to say, yeah, I've got a Mustang, Mach-E. So you've got the cool factor of the Mustang, and then you add Mach-E, which adds a little bit of sophistication in class. So now it's time to hop in the back seat, and we'll give that a look. Welcome to the rear seat of the Mach-E. You'll notice that I have plenty of headroom up here. I'm five foot nine, and there's no kind of squishing to get in or anything. I'm super comfortable. My legs, I haven't moved this passenger seat at all from the last scene. And so you can see I've got a good four, almost five inches of, of leg room here. And if I come to the center, there's a cutout where I'm actually gonna have more room. And you've got map pockets back here. And you do have another USB-A and USB-C charge port right down here in the center, as well as rear air vents. So your rear passengers are not going to overheat in the uh, summertime or, or you know, get cold in the winter because there are rear heating ducts and, and vents. Up here, you've got some really nice hooks for your hanging clothes, dry cleaning, and you could put a rod across the back if you wanted to carry a lot of hanging clothes. But these little guys just flip up out of the way and you've got a button here for your map lights. And then you also have in the center, a center armrest so that you can relax and keep that other passenger further away from you and separated. You may have noticed that there's no glass roof in this car. That's because it is an option on the premium and above trim levels. Now let's saddle up and take this pony car for a drive. I love the graphics in the Mach-E. They're so clean and more information will come up into this display when it's needed. However, it just remains simple and clean with your miles 
per hour than your range and your 94 um, battery percent currently. Uh, but this is always up on the screen and then of course it has a speed limit. One cool thing you might notice on the screen is that it shows the miles per hour in ground speed. Just a cool little touch there that, that Ford put in this car. Um, you'll notice this little cluster down here. Because this car and all uh, Mach-E's are compatible with Blue Cruise or you can get the subscription, this is the driver attention monitor and it's kind of it has sensors behind here to make sure that you're paying attention on the road. Now, looking down to the screen, and I say looking down because I feel like if Apple Maps are on here, you have to look kind of down or any of the maps or navigation, you're really kind of looking down and away from the road to look at that volume knob or any of this. So that's one of the things I don't love about this display. Just to show you what's in the menu system, this is so nicely designed. Although it is a little lower, it is a huge screen and it's very reactive as far as the, the touch screen itself. But you're going to notice up here you've got a menu of that, sort of all those little dots, and those are all the little icons. So you can choose your radio, your Apple CarPlay, your Android Auto. Um, you can search for public charging. This is a really cool feature where if you're not navigating and you just want to know where the next charger is, you can simply look at here and like here's all the chargers. Oh, and it also shows you how many chargers are available at a said spot and whether or not it's compatible with Ford's plug-in charge. Um, super cool to have that in there. And when you do navigate somewhere, so I will try this right off the bat. Let's just hit the uh, voice command. Navigate to One World Trade in New York City. Sorry, the navigation system is still loading. Please wait. Uh-oh, okay, we'll wait a second for that. What I was trying to show is that when you do go to navigate somewhere, and maybe I can do this sort of manually, uh, and where to, I want to say, one world trade. Okay. And I navigate there. Now, not only is it going to navigate to one world trade in New York City, but it's going to include the charging stops that I need to make which is amazing. And I want to see this from every manufacturer. You know, Tesla sort of pioneered this back in the day with the Tesla supercharging network. You just put in where you want to go. It's going to tell you where to stop and for how long. This Ford is also going to do that, which is really nice. And I've had no problems using it. Obviously, I had to wait for the nav to load, but it's going to tell me that I will need to stop once for a 15 minute charge. My battery will be at 13% when I finish my trip which is super cool. You've got a really great backup camera and 360 degree view on here. So really crisp. And then it gives you those guiding lines so that when you're parking, it's super easy to park and not curb your wheels. Looking down here, that's the wireless charging pad. And you can set one phone here to charge. And then your other phone right there is not going to charge, but there's a place for it and it's not going to go flying around. And then you have your USB-A and USB-C charging ports right there. And then a simple sort of traditional Ford um, park reverse neutral drive. And then you can go into low if you want to hold down on a hill and to regenerate electricity that way instead of using the mechanical brakes. Um, and then your electronic parking brake is right there. But down here, forgive my notepad. We're just going to look under here and you can see that the storage bin is there and you have a 12 volt accessory outlet right there as well. So I'm gonna close that up and now we can finally go for our drive. So I'm gonna get it started here or turn it on. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask it to navigate somewhere. So this is something I always like to try when I go into a car with voice. So if I'm testing a new car, so I'm just gonna hit the voice uh, command button on the steering wheel and I'm gonna tell it to navigate somewhere. Navigate to White House. A home destination has not been saved. Please use the screen to save it. Okay, let's reconfigure that. Navigate to the White House. Which item would you like? Um, okay, we'll say this one. Starting route to Holiday in Washington White House. All right, so now it's navigating. It didn't choose the White House. 
Um, one of the cool things I'll note is that navigation, whether you're using Apple Maps or the integrated uh, maps that are in the Maki, that the driving directions, while they're huge and on the main screen, they're also going to be on the gauge cluster. Now that we're on our way, I'm just going to show you what a little bit of a launch is like here. So we're just going to hammer it and we. <laughs> And I love the size of this car. It feels small enough to feel still sporty, but um, it will hold a ton of cargo and five people. I love having the big screen here. I think it is mounted just a little bit too low for my tastes. I would want to see this just a little bit higher if it's going to be a, a vertical monitor. Um, other than that, this information on the screen is so easy to read and you never really even have to look down if you're not navigating somewhere all your speed is right there really good view of the road you still have the bulges in the hood which i really like and so it feels like you know you may be in a two-door mustang but it just has that powerful feel one slightly annoying thing i did notice and it may be just this particular car is there's a little bit of a gear whine when i'm accelerating and decelerating around town i'm never going to notice that if i have the stereo on and i'm listening to music or talking to people in the car but there's a little bit of just a high-pitched whine that's intermittent it's not consistent which makes me think it's not supposed to be there and another slight thing i notice when getting up to 30 plus miles an hour is there is a little bit of wind noise somewhere leaking through this door again that this is a test car that's loaned to the media and so it may just particularly have lived a, a harder life than than a normal car but it's something that you just want to pay attention to in any car you're driving is there any wind leakage through the seals I do very much like driving this car and I love saying oh yeah what do you have this week oh, I'm driving a Mustang um, Maki. So it's just a fun car and, and you know to have that pony symbol on your key fob is, is pretty cool but you know I've only been driving this car primarily in the city and it's been very easy to drive. You can choose whether or not you want one pedal driving in the Maki or if you just want to use your brake and accelerator as if you're in a conventional ice car you do have that option what i haven't discovered yet and i don't think is available are different levels of regeneration in any one of the driving modes i think the driving modes will give you different levels of regeneration but you can't toggle that regen you can only choose one pedal driving or just regular driving with really nice sail through. In fact, if you put it in the whisper mode and you have one pedal driving off, I've noticed that the car will just glide and roll with like zero resistance. It's almost like there's a wind pushing you along. I think Ford's done a super job in incorporating everything that you need while you're driving right on the main screen without scrolling left and right through a lot of menus. So you have your seat heater controls, your heated steering wheel controls, you have you know your your climate controls for the cabin and then you have your audio controls and your apple carplay all easily accessible from here and i also love that there's a camera button at the top so at any time when you're parking or just curious you know how close you are to something you can pop on that camera right from the main screen it is amazing just how quiet this car is so you can have your zero to 60 time in 4.6 seconds in this model uh, without attracting any undue attention and sometimes it's just great to have some fun with the accelerator without turning everyone's head, including those that you don't want to take notice. Um, I will note that people do notice this car. I've been inside playing with the screen and going through the menus, and I've literally had a gentleman stop and stare at the front of the car, take a double take. Um, it turns heads. It's a great looking car. Certainly, if you're gonna buy a car, have one that when you look back at it, it gives you a big smile. This car definitely does each time I park it and walk away. So this concludes our short drive portion. Let's go back to where we started and I will tell you my fabulous favorites and not so favorites about the Mach-E. And now it's time for my fabulous favorites and not so favorites about the Mustang Mach-E. First fabulous favorite is it's a Mustang. They didn't come up with some weird new car name to name their first, you know, 
all electric SUV, they extended the Mustang brand. And I think this was one of the smartest things that Ford has ever done. Uh, it's cool. You can say, I've got a Mustang. And you just say, I have a Mustang Mach-E. And then people will start asking questions because they're curious about that Mustang Mach-E. The Mach-E has all the traditional Mustang signature details on the back of the car, on the front of the car, even with the hood sort of bubbling over as you're, you can see it from the driver's seat. It just feels and looks very powerful and sporty. Another fabulous favorite, it's not a huge SUV and it doesn't feel like a large lumbering SUV when you're driving it. It actually feels pretty compact and sporty, uh, which is pretty cool. So it's useful. You can drive it all the time, all year round. You know, you couldn't really do that with a traditional two-door Mustang with a high-performance V8 and uh, summer tires, but you can do that in the Mach-E. So it's really a car for four seasons, which is fantastic. Another fabulous favorite, that that Bang & Olufsen audio system comes in the premium trim and above. So you're always gonna have some good tunes in your Mustang Mach-E. Another thing I love about this car is the smooth power delivery. It just flies from a stop sign when you hammer that accelerator, but it also, if you're on the highway or driving through town, the accelerator is very well modulated and it's just super smooth. And my final fabulous favorite is the price. So this premium trim, really well equipped, starts at $49,995. And when you consider all of the tax incentives um, that may be available to you or rebate incentives, depending on where you live, it can really lower that price a good possibly $10,000. So you're looking at a $40,000 car at that point, and it's really well equipped. Now, my not so favorites about the Mustang Mach-E, that 150 kilowatt charging max speed. Now I know it would possibly raise the price to have a faster charging speed and uh, overall of the car, but if you can drop that 32 minute time forward down to 22 minutes, that would just be amazing. Another not so favorite is the seat comfort. I wanted a bit more support and lumbar. Also, there is no adjustable side bolstering in this particular premium trim. It's important to note that GT does have completely different seats and so they would provide a bit more sporty of a, of a seat with more aggressive side bolstering. I just could not fully get comfortable and that was only if like 30, 45 minutes of driving. I would have to take it on a longer road trip and really evaluate that. Well, that brings me to the end of this review for the Mustang Mach-E Premium E All-Wheel Drive. Thank you for coming along for the ride. If you like this video, just hit that like button before you go. And if you'd like to see more reviews of electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles, please subscribe to this channel. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you and have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.